This is Real Life with Susan Harf, our favorite life coach. Thank you so much for joining us for tips and strategies for how we can negotiate or navigate those tricky spots that we deal with every single day. And like you, I cannot wait to hear what's on our mind today. Hi, Susan. Hi, Rose. I'm so happy to see you and also thrilled that you joined us as well. So today I'm talking about something that I think is kind of uh, interesting. <laughs> okay, I will, ooh, the big build up. Today, today okay. I'm going to be interesting, <laughs> yeah. for once. Okay, it's interesting to me because I don't think most people think of this this way. The very thing that drives you to your significant other is the exact same thing that drives you crazy about them. Susan, you are right on target. And I don't know if you, this episode was meant for me, but... <laughs> It's true. I mean, and in my own in my own life, and everyone who knows Bob knows this. Bob is an engineer, so he is very meticulous and very precise. Even you know, he, we talked about in one of the other episodes, given the long version for everything, right? Yes. And I appreciate that so much in things that are going to be done around the house or in detail work that we're going to have happening. But then I don't appreciate it. When there's things that I want, just the bottom line. I just want to get this done and get over with, right? Exactly. So yes, that is exactly my that is exactly my life because I'm thinking, well, I'm more global and and not really that detail big oriented. Yeah, big picture. Yeah, so that's true. That's true. Yeah. Not only your spouse, I think your significant other. I find it in the workplace too. Absolutely, absolutely. That's very true, because we appreciate the things about us. And ourselves that are different and and the people with whom we work and the people with you know our family members but we we understand when they're like us so okay so here's here is an example so I had a couple that uh, came for coaching and the uh, I said to the husband um, why are you here and he said well he said, um, we're here to work on communication in our marriage. Great. So why do you need that with, with your wife, who's sitting right here? He said, well, the fact is, is that um, she can't make a decision. She relies on me for everything. Uh, I ask her, you know, the simplest thing about um, what, what do you want? I, I'm going to be making uh, some potatoes for dinner. Um, she made the rest of the things, I'm making the potatoes, and I say, what kind do you want? I don't care, whatever you want. Well, I'll, I can make mashed potatoes, I can make a gratin, I can make a baked potato, what, what do you want? I really don't care. It drives me nuts when she says that because I want her to have an opinion. Okay, so why, by the way, why did you um, marry her? He said, oh, well, um, I knew that she would make a great mother. She's very kind and compassionate. I knew she'd be a wonderful wife. She's so supportive and, and just goes along. At the time that I married her, I was building a business, and I knew that she would be very supportive of the fact that we didn't have much when we first got together, but she would stick by me and never said a word about, you know, if we couldn't afford something, it was fine with her. And she just went along with the flow, and she just allowed me to really do my thing. And I said, so... She went along with the flow. She let you do your thing. She allowed you to be in charge. She was fine to just take a back seat while you were building a business. And now what you don't like about her, oh, and you thought she'd be a great mother because she's mm -hmm. so compassionate and kind and easy to get along with. And now what you don't like about her is she can't make a decision. She leans on you too much. You feel like she is, is ringing is something around your neck, a noose around your neck. And I said to her, he said, yeah, that's right. I said to her, what drew you to him? She said, well, he was so definitive about what he was going to do in life. He was going to build a business. He had worked for somebody else before, and he decided, it's my time. I'm going to take the leap, and I'm going to take a loan out, and I'm going to, build a bi I'm going to start a business. I'm going to build it. I know I can, I, and, and we may have to tough it out for several years or who knows how many, but I know I can do this. And she said, I, I loved, he, he was saying that at such a young age. And, you know, most of the men that I met at that age didn't even know, you know, what they wanted to do. And he had everything all set. And I just love that about him. And, and he, he not only knew what he was going to do in life with his career, 
but he had he had goals and ideas and the way we should raise the children and you know where he wanted to send them to school and he wanted to live in a, a particular part of town because they had better schools and I could go to him for everything and not only that he knows how to fix things and you know I could just really depend on him for everything and I said what don't you like about him she says well you know I mean I don't really uh, I don't care sometimes if we go to the Greek restaurant or the Italian restaurant, but you know, sometimes I feel like I'd like to have my turn. Like I really, I, I don't say anything, but, but I wish we could do my, what, where I want to go. Do you tell him? Not really, because you know, he's just so domineering sometimes. Mm -hmm. He wants to go to the Italian restaurant, so I say, okay, I don't really care mm -hmm. where I want to go. And, and he wanted to live in that particular neighborhood, and you know, there's other neighborhoods that I would have kind of liked to, but, but he wanted to do that. And you know, I, I find that, that sometimes he just is too much. Too much of what? Too much of everything. He tells me where he wants to go on vacation. He tells me where we're going to go to eat. He tells me where he wants to live. I really feel like sometimes I'd like to do what I want. And I said, so you married him because he was definitive, he knew what he wanted, he, you were willing to, to uh, live kind of meagerly at the beginning, especially. You were willing to go along with whatever he wanted because he could be the boss. And now he's the boss and he's too domineering and he tells you what to do and he tells you where to go and he tells you how to live and you don't like that. That's right. So they both found someone for whom they were on one end of the continuum when they met, and that's the same continuum now, except they're, on a different, they're in a different place of the continuum. We all become more of who we are. That's another part of it. Mm. And How so, though? How do we become more of who we are? When, as time goes on and we become more comfortable, with our spouse or our coworkers, we feel more comfortable being who we really are. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, I, I can think of an example right off the top of my head here, where when I met my husband, he took me to a covered bridge that was unusual. They are unusual. They're not, they're not mm -hmm. a lot of covered bridges in the country, I found out. So he was, um, I went to visit him in his hometown and he took me to a covered bridge. And I said, um, I was on the covered bridge and I said, oh, this is so nice. This is, this is really lovely. I, I'm really having a good time. And uh, it was raining out and my shoes were getting wet. And I remember I didn't have a raincoat on. I had a, another kind of coat that was not keeping me dry. And he's pointing out all the things on the, on the covered bridge. And I'm on a date. And I really like him. And I'm saying, this is really beautiful. <laughs> this is just, I'm so enamored with this covered bridge. And I was thinking, my shoes are soaked. I'm getting cold. <laughs> I want a raincoat. <laughs> yeah. I want to get in the car. <laughs> I want to go. I like the covered bridge, but I want to be warm. Right. Okay. That's who I really am, that second part. I did like the covered bridge. I loved being there. Yeah. I loved being with him. But, but you could have taken a shorter amount of time. Yeah. With the cover bridge. And part of, and, and who I really was at that moment was, I'm cold, my feet are soaked, and let's get in the car. Mm. Well, yeah. now, if I was on a covered bridge with him, <laughs> I'd say, let's get in the car. Right. That we've been here long enough. Do you think age plays a part in this, too, for coming up to... <laughs> what are you insinuating? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about myself, right? So I'm thinking, as I've gotten yeah. older... There would be things that I may have done in my 20s or 30s or uh -huh. 40s. But now I'm thinking, no. Now I think you, so you talk about that part of getting to know yourself a little bit more. Then you just, you grow into it almost. You know, yeah. you grow into your fulfillment. The other part that I think is kind of interesting is reflecting on my own life that sometimes I think we look for the people who do those things so much better than us those little shadow sides that are not my strengths, but I'm going to look course. to you for those, those strengths that will then fill out, you know, fill out those parts of me. And that is the most important point because while we're looking for someone who's going to fill in those gaps, while we want to be with somebody who can do certain things better and, and then I can do the other things better, 
when we're looking for that yin and yang, mm -hmm. what we're really looking for is somebody who's on a different part of the continuum that we, that we seek. So in other words, yes, you were looking for that person who was more detailed. And, and what drives you crazy is that you are not that detailed person. He is. So when I say it's the same thing that drives you crazy, it means that those are the things that you end up not being in concert with mm -hmm. because, like I said at the very beginning, <laughs> what you know better is the person who's just like you. That's the person you understand better. When somebody says, yeah, I, you know, somebody who's an engineer is talking to another engineer and he says to the other person, do you have your clothes categorized in your closet by color or, or how is it categorized? And the person may say, well, it's not by color, it's by season. But, but, but you better believe it's categorized in some way. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, somebody else asking that question may not have their clothes categorized in the closet at all. Or some of their clothes may not even be in the closet. Mm -hmm. Some of them may be thrown in the closet. The point is, is that we understand people who think like we do the best. Secondly, we want to understand the people who are not like us to the point where we can learn from them, be with them, appreciate them, and, and really want to be there because we know intrinsically that they can teach us things or they can just do things for us that we don't want to do. Right. So the That's a good point. So <laughs> the, thing that, the things that drive us to the person to begin with is exactly what's going to drive us crazy because we're not like that. But, but you know, I have a question about mm -hmm. that because um, partly I think if you, and in my situation, like having a common value system uh -huh. and a common, those basic values that I'm like, I, that attracted me to you and we're alike on that. That's important foundational stuff. But then it was the other parts of the relationship. So it's almost layered in a way in my own head mm -hmm. and put me on the right track, but in my own head that, then those other pieces, after the foundation is laid, then those other pieces that fill me or I fill someone else with are those, those parts that are important, but they're not quite as important as that core value part of who we are as people or what we believe as, as yeah. people. Yeah, I think, I think you need, when you're, when you're selecting, you know, now we're talking about we're selecting a mate or we're selecting someone who's going to be very close to us in our lives. You want the person who is who has shared values for ab absolutely for sure yeah. you want somebody who has shared values and people that someone that you're not going to have to um, be in be in a in a world where you're just completely uncomfortable with but at the same time what drives you to them in in terms of the everyday behavioral kinds of things that make your lives what they are Sometimes that can drive that all that same thing can drive you to the point where you say we need help on this or or this is really bugging me or we need to talk about this because we I don't I'm not liking how this is this is functioning. And that's when we become more extreme parts of ourselves. Yeah. So so we always one of the good ways to look at this is we always are more of who we are, or to the 10th power, as I say, when we're in an argument. So most of the time, it works. Most of the time, it's really good that, that he's the person who can uh, enumerate, count, count, be into quality, be, be concerned about the small pieces of it, um, and you being concerned about the overall picture. Think about your role at work. You know, you need to be looking at the overall picture. Um, so, so most of the time, it works. It's when you don't agree and you don't see each other's point of view that it doesn't. And those are the times when we usually stick our feet in the sand and we say, I'm not moving, I'm not budging. And that's when, mm -hmm. that's when we run into the problems. Sure. So it's when we become more of ourselves that we have an issue, we gotta talk about it. It's, it's when we are not agreeing that we want to talk about it, but um, that's why I said that's what drives you crazy. It doesn't mean that the relationship doesn't work. In fact, that's why you chose each other. Mm -hmm. That is why it works. And when we talk about, now if we want to talk about this in relation to work, in our work environment, what's important there 
is to get a handle on who this person is because unlike at your in your home life you can't you can't often sit down and say I don't like what you just said I don't like what you did or I'm not comfortable with this or what do we have to change or how can we be better together when in your work environment sometimes what it looks like is I don't like my boss mm -hmm. or I don't like that person I supervise or I don't like my peer I don't like my colleague and when we again when we drill down what we find is it's not that you don't like them it's that you don't understand them most of the time so as an example of that would be somebody who um, at work is a big picture person um, and by the way any personality trait can be the boss or can be the supervisor or can be the supervisee mm -hmm. uh, just because someone is um, in charge does not mean that they have to have a particular personality type. But because you have just different personality types at work, sometimes we really don't understand the person who we say we don't like. So for instance, as I was about to say, so let's say there's somebody at work who when you assign something to them, you say, I need this by Tuesday. Um, and the reason I do is because, let's say you even give them a reason. Sometimes you don't even have to, but if you say, I have to because I've got to pass this on by Wednesday to somebody else, and I need time to, to work on it. Okay, so let's say it is Tuesday, and it is 4.30, and you haven't even seen any a hide nor hair of, the, of this person. And one minute before whenever you leave the office, 6.30, whenever you leave, one minute before the person walks in and gives it to you. And you're kind of hot under the collar because you're saying, now I gotta take this home and work on it tonight because I need to have this done by Wednesday to pass it on. And you may say, I don't like that person. I don't like the way, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. They always give it to me late. They're always late, you know, the, either the last minute or not even on time at all. Like they give it to me the next day when I needed it the, the former day. And what we find out about that person, what I would assume, I, my guess about that person is they are oriented around quality. That's their motivation. So when they're working on anything, they're looking to dot every I, cross every T, look it over again, read it over a third time, um, go through it as much as they need to do. Keep scrolling on the computer because when they hand it over, they wanna know that there is nothing on that form or on that document or on that whatever brief, whatever it was they were writing, there's not one thing that you're going to have to change when they hand mm -hmm. it to you. Now, here's you. Let's say somebody gives you an assignment and they say, I want it done by Friday. And you've got a lot of other things to do. So you say, I'm going to get that done early because I have a bigger project also due on Friday. So I'm going to get this done, get this whipped, in, whipped up, whipped out, Give it to them, we're done, and now I can concentrate on my larger looming project. There may be a couple things. Maybe, maybe a word is wrong, and maybe the, maybe the spelling isn't perfect. Maybe you didn't have time to do the spell check. Maybe you didn't take time to look at it a, a second time, and, and the words are what they are. Maybe there could have been a better word to use. Maybe, maybe you left out a paragraph even. But the point is, you got it done ahead of time so that you could get to your bigger project that was more important to you. The person you handed it to, let's say that's the other guy that we're talking about, the person who's into quality. Mm -hmm. And I don't wanna say you're not into quality. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you right. may be motivated, mm -hmm. primarily motivated by something different. So do you see how that person can then say, I don't like that person, mm -hmm. I don't like her, I don't like her. She doesn't give it to me right. When, I, when she gives me something, I have to redo it. But you're thinking, I'm trying to help you because I know you've got to pass it along mm -hmm. and I'm trying to help myself too because I've got a bigger project. So I'm just going to look at the overall picture and I don't need the details. So in the work environment, should we, is your advice to know actually what the, that language is that that other person speaks, whether it's the um, <clears throat> detail orientation or if they only want the bullet points, know what that is ahead of time so that you can deliver and communicate with each other in a way that 
you're going to give people what they want and still satisfy your need to be thorough and investigative or whatever it might be? Well, it's a very good question. I think the answer is, number one, you give the person the benefit of the doubt that they're not trying to hurt you. They're not trying to pull, pull the wool over your eyes. They're not trying to give you something that's incomplete or too late or any of the things that we accuse people of. And so we try and give the person the benefit of the doubt. We can even say to ourselves, I haven't had the training yet about, about different personality <laughs> styles at work, but I know enough to know that, that, and this is you talking to yourself, you can say, I know enough to know that this person doesn't work like I do. We have different styles, but it's really a style. So if we come, if we come to this saying, this is a style, this doesn't have to drive me crazy because this is the way they work. This is not the way I work. Their personality style is different and their work style is different. So now what do I need to do to get it from them the way I need it? Well, what I need to do is speak to them the way they need to be spoken to, not the way I do. What I need to do then, for instance, for the person who wants to, I know is oriented, motivated by quality, I can give them an extra day if I can. If I can't, sometimes I may not give the project to that person. Mm -hmm. I may give a different project to that person because if I'm their boss because I may think that they will work better on something different where it doesn't involve having to hand it to everyone in the department before we send it out. So, so number one, understanding. Understanding what your work style is and understanding theirs. Two, give the person the benefit of the doubt that they are operating out of their own motive, what motivates them. And not necessarily their value system, because they can value what you value. They want, they want a good product in the end. But they're motivated around something different if the way they work is different. So the second thing is give them the benefit of the doubt that they want to do a good job. And, and then hopefully help them be in a position to do a good job. And so, so the, the, the final thought about this is we're not the same. We need to give people the benefit of the doubt and we need to try and help them meet their goal in terms of what motivates them. Because that in the end will help, not only is that, is that good practice, it makes, it makes for a pleasant work environment, but it also helps you do your job better. So, so what you're doing is you're offering the person some understanding that they don't have to be like you. It's just that we need to understand each other in order to be able to work together. And so often we're working on teams and, so, and we need each other. So, so that understanding is key and also the willingness to understand is even more key. The, the willingness to say, well, maybe it's not that I don't like them. Maybe it's that, that they're not showing their best self to me because I'm giving them my personality style at work, which is not theirs, and they may be flustered by that. They may not know how to cope with that. They may not know, know what to do with that because that's not their style. If, if anyone calls me up while I'm working, I can take the call. Mm. Very rarely do I not take the call. The only time I don't take the call is when I am presenting, when I'm with a client, a private client, or I am making a speech, or I'm here with you. Mm -hmm. I don't take the call when I'm doing any of those things. Mm -hmm. but, but if I'm doing just my, um, my own life, and it doesn't involve um, putting somebody else's time out, I'll take the call. Does that work for the... Um, for the personal relationships too, it seems like it would. Those same strategies you're telling us to apply to the workplace Absolutely. and the interpersonal relationships Absolutely. are the but, same thing. But when I'm dealing with someone who is, who, because my personality style is, <laughs> I'm motivated around getting along. That's what motivates me. Mm -hmm. Getting along motivates me. I will do anything to get along with that peer. Um, so, if I'm dealing with somebody who is not motivated by what I'm saying, let's say I'm motivated by what I am, maybe, maybe they're motivated by the bottom line. So if I make a call to them, now I'm someone who I take, I take the call most often. 
if I make a call to them and they're busy, they may not take the call. Or if it's a personal relationship, let's say it's my husband. He's a bottom line person. If I, if I call him at work and he's in the middle of a project like I could have been, but I still take the call, he, said, he takes the call, but he'll say, tell me what I, what I can do. Tell me what I can do to, um, right now. What would you like me to do? Oh, bottom line. Or bottom line, yeah. Give me the whole story. Yeah. No, no, doesn't want the whole story. <laughs> tell me what you need. And whatever it is, he'll do it. Mm -hmm. but, but he does not want to hear the whole story. Not then. If I'm in the middle of something, I'll stop it. I'll stop what I'm doing to hear the story. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't make me better. No. It doesn't make me better at all. Styles. It's mm -hmm. different styles. Mm -hmm. But the person who doesn't know the supervisor who's motivated by the bottom line, mm -hmm. and they start to go into the story, and you're the, you're the person who's motivated by the bottom line, and you say to them, you know what, I don't have time for this right now. Could you just give me the bottom line, and, and maybe we'll talk about it again, and, you know, give me the specifics later. That person may walk away, and if they don't know your story, and they don't, they don't know that you're motivated that way, they can walk away and say, wow, she's brash. She's brash. Wow. She's, she's yeah. and, and so I don't like mm -hmm. her. But mm -hmm. in fact, if you took the time to understand where that person's coming from, it doesn't have to be where you're coming from. You then may, may choose to really find out about this person, and you may end up liking them a lot. It's just a matter of if you, if you afford yourself the opportunity to get to know what motivates them. That's really what we're talking about then your feeling about them can really change. And we started off today talking about what, what brings you towards someone mm -hmm. is something that can drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. And you can see how if the person, if you hire somebody because they're very good at detail and that's what you want from them, but what drives you crazy about them is they don't hand in things on time then what you can say to yourself in that example, for example, is what you can say to yourself is, okay, I hired them because they're going to give it to me perfectly. It's going to be perfect when they hand it to me. So right now I'm a little, I'm a little peeved because I don't have it. But I need to think about why did I hire him. And I need to appreciate the fact that he's giving me something that I can't do or I don't want to do or I can't do it this way, and I, or I don't have the time to do it this way. If I had mm -hmm. the time, I would have given him, him the assignment. So now I'm going to appreciate that that's what he's giving me. And you know what? He's going to be late, or he's going to be right up to the minute. But when he gives it to me, it's going to be exactly what I wanted, and that's what I hired him for, his strength. And his strength is not my strength, but my strength isn't his either. So, so right now I'm going to appreciate him, and I'm going to accept what he gives me, and I'm going to be happy that he gives me it. So is that a perfect world? No. But we don't live in a perfect world. And what's more important, I think, is that when you then accept that from your employee. Or your family members or your or neighbors your or members, anybody. Or anyone, <clears throat> they are going to be much more willing to give you their best. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever was motivated to give anyone their best by having a finger pointed at them, yeah. figuratively or literally. It does not motivate people to give you their best. Mm -mm. No way. And the other thing is, is that when you assume the best, you usually get the best. Hmm. I like that. When you assume the best, you usually get the best. And I think if you're aware of these things, you know, self-awareness can do so much being aware that there are the different personality types and being aware that, you know, these things are going to exist or how people might behave or how to delegate tasks, like you said, or deal with family relationships that could be a little bit tricky. So going in with a positive intention, being aware of all the differences, you're going to come out a lot happier and with a lot less conflict. Absolutely. And, mm. you know, we to tell you the truth, you know, like every time we, we sit down and have conversations, we never know where the conversation is going to go, right. right? And we both love that about the conversation. Mm -hmm. Today, I really didn't know it was going to go in that direction yeah. because we started off talking about a couple <laughs> and about <clears throat> and, and about how we how the things that drive us to people yeah. uh, end up driving us crazy too. But look at all the different arenas in our life that can apply mm -hmm. to that, and it just you know it, it makes us it makes us better it makes us happier 
to be able to to really under, be more understanding. And, and that's good. Who doesn't want to be happy, right? Exactly. Exactly. Who doesn't want to be happy? Well, I'm happy now, Susan. So thank you so much. This was very, very enlightening. This has been such a wonderful segment, and I hope that all of you can find little nuggets of advice like I always do from our very favorite life coach. If you'd like to reach out to Susan, you can find her at real life at blueridgepbs.org, and I know she'd love to hear from you. Thank you again so much for joining us. I'm Rose Martin, and we'll see you next time.